25th May 2014 in Jersey Channel Islands, a proposition P102 was lodged by Deputy Sam Mezek to agree in principle that same-sex couples should be permitted to enter into civil marriages and to draft legislation to achieve that. Senator Philip Osif lodged an amendment for public consultation and no constraint on churches who do not wish to conduct same-sex marriages. A letter surfaced from the Jersey Evangelical Alliance. Rather than extending the benefits of marriage to same-sex couples, redefining marriage would introduce the instabilities and infidelities commonly associated with the homosexual relationships into society's understanding of marriage. A second amendment was lodged by Senator Ian Lamarcon for no change before a study and report into the appropriateness with safeguards of civil partnerships and civil marriages. He said, I need to remind members of the peculiar status of the rector of a Jersey parish and of matters such as the parish ecclesiastical assembly. I believe that this assembly, and particularly the Connetard, need to be very careful not to take any action which might prejudice this historic and important relationship. I am passionate about marriage. I do not want anything, no matter how well-meaning, to, to water it down. Philip Osif said, I am surprised Senator Lamarcon's amendment was accepted. I think it's such a fundamentally different proposition than what was which originally requested. Legalising same-sex marriage was delayed when the states voted 24 to 18 to consult on the impact of changing the law. Sam Mezek was appalled. We can't agree in principle today that you're equal and instead we'll have a consultation to find out whether you're equal or not. I don't think that's anywhere near good enough. Deputy Monfortadia tweeted to suggest an equality parade on Saturday lunchtime from the World Square to Liberation Square.
parading down this way along King Street up to the end towards Charing Cross and then back towards Liberation Square, symbolically where we're going to end up today. Uh, thank you for turning out. There'll be music and speeches there. We've got a lovely day for it and it's great to see so many of you. So uh, without any further ado, we'll start the procession and we'll catch up with you in about 10, 15 minutes in the square, Liberation Square. At age 13, my mother knew I wasn't straight. She didn't understand, but she had so much to say. She sat me on the couch, looked me straight in my face, and said, you'll burn in hell or probably die of age. <laughs> It's funny now, but at 13, it was pain To be almost sure of who you are and have it ripped away And I'm sorry if it's too real for some of you to fathom But hate for who you love is not exactly what you'd imagine uh, And I guess it was disastrous Cause everything that happened afterwards was just madness Locked away for two years to keep me on the inside Because she'd rather see a part of me die than me thrive and it's tougher when it's something you can't deny And ignorance teaches us it's something that you decide You're driven by your choices, an optical illusion Here's to understanding that it's not always confusion Cause And I can't change Even if I tried Even if I wanted to And I've seen kids hide behind walls and footballs and things like pride I've seen innocent children suffer beneath bruises Suffer beneath every single hand that chooses Ignorance, fuck your religion, fuck constitutions, fuck superstition There are no lakes of fire, we're here on earth And the only thing to do is put love first And so I stand for the boy who died by his hand To the sound of his father screaming, woman loves man This is Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve and I stand for the girl with the cuts up her sleeve and a heart in her hand and that chip on her shoulder and I stand for it all until ignorance is over this is for you for knowing who you are for never letting your magic outside of your heart be you be brave and understand that things do change I accept you for you when I don't understand and I love you for you cause this is who I am yeah I accepted you for you when I didn't understand Now love me for me, cause this is who I am Message to the people who just don't get it Love is love, there is no difference Not a medication to fix it, there is no prescription No rehab to visit, it is not an addiction It's love, and it's selfless It's yours and everybody else's So don't badger and abuse the solemnly defenseless See us as yourself, there's no equality and difference Until we all get it, we'll be drowning in the same blood Despite orientation, we all feel the same love We'll be drowning in the same blood Despite orientation We all feel the same love What is it? Way up high What's next? There's a place that I dreamed of Once in a lullaby It's a bit low, isn't it? Somewhere Is it a great day today? I'm so pleased to be on this sunny day for Jersey's first ever Equality Parade. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we're here today to send out a message that Jersey men and women across the island believe that all people deserve the right to marry the person they love, regardless of their gender. 
We believe that all people deserve to be treated equally before the law, no matter what their race, gender, religion or sexual orientation is. We are here to say that Jersey is not a homophobic or bigoted society. You often hear from people say that Jersey is a bit socially conservative. We're a bit happy to remain behind the rest of the world. But doesn't this fantastic turnout here today prove just what a load of nonsense that is? <laughs> On Tuesday, I brought a proposition to the states of Jersey to ask states members to agree that gay and lesbian couples should be shown dignity and respect by being given the basic right to get married. 81% of the public in a JEP poll said that they supported equal marriage too. But Unfortunately, things didn't go the way they wanted, and instead the states decided that we wouldn't accept equal marriage today. Instead, we'd have a consultation. That's right, we couldn't decide whether gay and lesbian couples should be treated equally or not. We'll put it out to consultation instead. Sam and I, uh, who worked together on the debate earlier this week, were thwarted uh, by a number of minority states members. I believe that we can fix this, I believe that we can move on and I will commit to working uh, with ministerial colleagues uh, and Sam uh, to find a solution to legislation that will work, uh, that will give equality in the eyes of the state for all uh, relationships. I care about this. You are sending a message um, to state's members in Liberation Square. Let us liberate ourselves from marriage inequality. Let us be proud. Let us be unified. Let us be clear. Let us be inclusive. All relationships are equal. I'll say one final thing. Today is my anniversary uh, with my partner. And I'm going to go... I'm going to leave you and wish you well. And I'm proud of the history of the trade union movement in fighting for equality. And this is just a simple question of equality. I'd like to congratulate in particular some of the young people who are here today and, and students that we all know, because you are the future of this island and you have the right to expect these equalities. So well done. Let's have a round of applause for the young people. Uh, I'd like to introduce Louise Dugan, Secretary of the NET, who's going to give you a much more poignant speech, I believe. Thanks very much. And true to form, as, a, as an early years teacher, I've got some props with me. <laughs> yeah. um, I would just want you to meet Fred and Jasper. Um, and these are puppets that I use in my classroom when I'm teaching children. I use them to help me teach maths and literacy um, and also social skills. So, you know, if someone's had a falling out, we'll act it out. And, you know, Fred's cross because Jasper doesn't share his toys with him, etc. And um, so I let the children play with them in the classroom. And one day, a little boy came up to me with, with his friends and he said, Miss Duble, um, Fred and Jasper, because they're really good friends, they want to get married. Um, now Fred and Jasper, aside from the fact that one of them is alien, one of them is a, a lion, um, they're both male. So you can see, this was a four-year-old child, and the whole class got involved. There was not a flicker of any prejudice there at all. Oh, four-year-olds can do it, can't we? Yeah. Yeah. As a teacher, I'm in the business of, of building the future for our young people, through, through our young people. And it's no mistake, actually, I think, no coincidence that Sam just happens to be the youngest person in the States, um, and he's the one that's bringing this proposition forward, because uh, young people, this is a non-issue for them. And we all are part of history today in Jersey. Let's not forget this. These kind of things don't happen easily, and it's you guys out there who made this happen. When we put this small post on Facebook as a little idea, we were rem it was remarkable how many people took it up, because this is an issue which transcends politics is about basic equality and that that's what's really encouraging that Jersey isn't apathetic when it comes to to politics is actually um, the states has failed to engage us but we we stand here nonetheless uh, on, on the basic rights um, who's next I think we've got uh, my colleague Nick Lacornu it's tremendous to see you all here in such diversity and I think that's the important word today because there are campaigners here for equality equality for all things not only gay rights but for the rights of women and we have had women speaking one of the points I'm going to make today is an important one that vote in the states to kick the uh, equal marriage into touch was done because there were uh, state members who didn't want to have to face this as an issue in the forthcoming elections on the 15th of October. They did so because they were frightened that they would frighten the horses, they would 
um, alienate one part of their constituency. Well, the ironic thing is it's blown back on them now. There's been a massive demonstration, and it's going to be the question for all candidates standing in the forthcoming elections. Do you support equal marriage? Thank you very much for turning out, for being here today, supporting equality, supporting acceptance, supporting tolerance for other people. But social change doesn't just happen. We do need to get behind various people who do want change within this island. Uh, my committee is in charge of all the various things to try and help people to turn out uh, in October where you can have so much of an influence on this matter. That is your opportunity to influence how the state decides these things. And then there is the most ugly side of this debate which we have seen in, e in recent weeks. The myths of hatred being promulgated by the Jersey Evangelical Alliance, which is so far from the Bible's central message of love thy neighbour as thyself. They believe that somehow if we introduce equal marriage, we will descend into a culture of infidelity and promiscuity. So let me send a message to the Reverend Mike Taylor and the Jersey Evangelical Alliance. We, in the LGBTQ community, are no more promiscuous than anyone else. Those of us who wish to enter into marriage do, no, do not do so on a whim. We are more likely to uphold the principles of marriage, unconditional love, faithfulness and support as we have never had this right before and value it highly. Today we turn the other cheek and say to the Reverend Taylor and his alliance, we forgive you. <laughs> For in the words of the late Nobel Peace Prize laureate Nelson Mandela, forgiveness frees the soul. We reach out to you and all other faith groups to begin a constructive dialogue of mutual understanding. We offer you a sign of our peace and friendship. It's a bit like aliens coming to Earth, isn't it? Not to do so, we will only breed Excuse me. division, hatred and intolerance of one another. That, my friends, is a path to t true destruction. Instead, we seek healing and reconciliation. As Martin Luther King, black civil rights activist, once said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. To the Reverend Mike Taylor, I say this. In future, back up your opinions with fact. Yes, we respect your right to hold the beliefs you do no matter how much we may disagree with them, but do not use lies to deny us the fundamental right to marry the person we love. We will respect your beliefs, but we will challenge each and every one of those which has no foundation.
Thanks a lot. All the best. Lots of love. Definitely for things like this, it's just so easy to get the messages out, and it's also a good way to, to counter what, what one might call the traditional media. You know, because uh, traditional media, you can't in the past you couldn't really interact with it. You'd have a statement, and even just due to space, they won't be able to report everything. So you know, people who follow the states or whatever aspect of social life in Jersey, they can just write directly without any kind of censorship, and you know, people. To uh, look for quality writing, blogs, etc. So you know, so the, the way we access information has just changed radically in the last 10, 10 years. We saw in the by-election that you know two reform Jersey candidates were elected. They weren't elected because of social media. They, they were elected ultimately because they did a lot of hard work knocking on doors. But social media definitely helped get the message out there. Um, and I think what we've seen today is that people who traditionally don't engage in the uh, conventional ways with either media or with government do so on Facebook, Twitter and all the other sites that, that there are. So I mean, yeah, it's, it's got to be an important tool nowadays and any politician, you know, um, who doesn't take that seriously does that at their peril, I think. Gay Pride parades across the world are an annual event. It, Jersey should be no exception to that. Um, we don't just have a, a big gay and lesbian community in the island, but lots of people who aren't part of that community appreciate it and uh, believe in uh, equality for them. So it'd be great to see people on the streets every year celebrating everything about that culture. Ideally, I'd like for some sort of LGBT campaigning organisation in Jersey to be founded. Um, I can't really do that because I'm a politician and I'm not actually a part of that community. So it's limited what I can do, but I want to encourage people to do that. And I think that would be the most important first step afterwards. I don't want this to be an electoral issue. Why should equality be a political electoral issue? It's so obvious that it needs to be done. Uh, but you have to take people with you. And we need to find a solution for the established church that can marry currently people uh, in church in the same way that a register office. And if you believe that we should not dictate to the church uh, and that they should not dictate to us, we need to find a legal reason and members, I think, wanted to know what the solution to that was. I uh, say to some people, they will never be persuaded. Some people are homophobic. But I've been in this place for 15 years. I know my colleagues. They were affronted by some of the labels of unfair homophobia. Um, others are homophobes. There's nothing we can do about that apart from show a bit of love and to show them actually that we are normal. We're ordinary people that have lives and have rights. got probably three to four hundred people turning out that's tremendous because Jersey has this kind of tradition of apathy it's got 60 to 70 percent voter abstention and it's because good people don't vote we get bad governments I'd like to just explore that a little further you say good people don't vote what, what are the reasons for that well there are many reasons for voter abstention the primary reason here is that Jersey the one-party state it's very much the party of finance it's their representatives that are elected. We have a gerrymandered political system that is an historical legacy that leaves the country parishes overrepresented. They don't have the population. In the country parishes live the wealthy. In St Helia, which is underrepresented numerically in terms of deputies, live who? The working classes. <clears throat> and the system has been designed to ensure that the working class doesn't vote. So in St Helia, 70% voter abstention and in all there are 10,000 people in St Helia out of a population of 30,000 who are not registered to vote even. We need to connect with them and today was just the beginning. Liberate is an inclusive group. We welcome people irrespective of their gender, their gender, orient, uh, gender identity, their sexual orientation, belief disability. Um, we know that we're not always going to agree and you just have to respect that at the end of the day.
What we will challenge and liberate is prejudiced remarks, um, which are perhaps insulting. Um, so, you know, anyone who wishes to discriminate in, you know, what they're saying, we will challenge that. But we do, at the same time, respect their belief. Everyone is born free and equal in dignity and rights. Governments can take those rights away, um, but as you can see here today, people protest when those rights are denied to people. The chair of the group Liberate, which is LGBTQ, well, I don't know whether that quite works, but okay. Um, LGBTQ stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning.